Hey guys, welcome back to Fantasy Tips. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Washington Capitals. It's the second to last episode of our series of episodes, talking about each NHL team, talking about their lines, and their noteworthy players, and whether I think you should consider drafting those players. Before we get started, though, today, guys, please leave a like if you haven't already, and hit that subscribe button. More than 50% of you guys are not subscribed, and do hit that notification bell if you want notifications for the rest of my preseason content, and then for my waiver wire videos to start the year. Let's jump right into it now, and let's start with the lines that the Capitals have been using in the preseason so far. On the top line, Alex Ovechkin, Evgeny Kuznetsov, and Anthony Mantha. On the second line, Connor McMichael, Dylan Strome, and Connor Brown. On the third line, Connor Sherry, Lars Eller, and TJ Oshie. Let's start with Alexander Ovechkin. Let me start by saying in leagues that have hits, Ovechkin was the fourth best player in the entire league, right behind Matthews, McDavid, and McKinnon, okay? In terms of points per game. So Ovechkin, at this ADP of 12.9, is an absolute steal if your league has hits in it. If your league doesn't have hits in it, he's a little bit less valuable, but still definitely a top 10 player in your league. Ovechkin is determined to hit Gretzky's goal record, so he's not going to slow down. He's going to keep in tip-top shape, and I think Ovechkin will attain that Gretzky's goal record. He's just going to have to you know, really, really, really stay in shape and really perform. And I think that's what he's going to do. And that's why I really like Ovechkin as a top 10 pick this year. Definitely a really good value if you can get him at 12 or 13. All right, John Carlson in leagues that count hits last year was the 63rd best player with 71 points, nice amount of shots, a decent amount of blocks. If he really doesn't have hits, he's a little bit more valuable than that. His ADP of 38.8 is a little bit high and you'll definitely be reaching for him a little bit because he probably won't finish the 38th best fantasy player. But... John Carlson obviously is one of the best fantasy defensemen there is out there, and I don't mind reaching for him at this ADP, although I do prefer grabbing Latang uh, about 20 spots later, and I think Latang might even finish higher than John Carlson, especially in leagues that have hits in them. In leagues without hits, though, John Carlson is definitely super valuable, and at this ADP, he might be able to hit it. Next on the list is Darcy Camper with an ADP of 64.7, and if you're looking at his stats, like, wow, five shutouts, a 921 save percentage, 2.54 GAA, like, that's pretty good. You guys got to remember that that was with the Colorado Avalanche last year, and the Washington Capitals are a good team, but they're nowhere near as good as the Colorado Avalanche was last year when they won the Stanley Cup. So Darcy Kemper's stats will not be as good this year, and I think that drafting him at an ADP of 64.7 is really, really high. Now, obviously, the competition for the backup job doesn't seem like much because Lindgren doesn't really have a whole lot of experience in the NHL period. Last year, in the very short amount of games that he played, he looks, looked really, really good, though. So if Kemper, you know, struggles at all, Lindgren could, you know, sneak up on that starting spot. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but Kemper is someone that I wouldn't personally draft at 64.7 because I just don't think Washington is that amazing of a team. Next, I have Evgeny Kuznetsov finishes the 82nd best player in terms of fantasy points per game last year in leagues that count hits. In leagues that don't count hits, he's a little bit more valuable, but still with an ADP of 66.3, that's definitely a little bit high. And last year he did play with Ovechkin for, the, for a large part of the season. And this year he's lined up once again, obviously, with Ovechkin. So he's definitely got a really, really good spot there to be able to succeed. And there is no backstrom this year. So Kuznetsov likely sticks with Ovechkin the entire season. Top power play as well with Ovechkin. So definitely a really good opportunity there. So I don't think he's a particularly bad pick. I think he's just going a tad bit early, especially since he is a natural center. And generally, because there are so many this year, they tend to drop a little bit in the draft, which is why I think Kuznetsov is just going a tad early. But if you do draft him here, I don't think it's a particularly bad pick. Next, I have TJ Oshie, who had a very, very bad year, guys, last year. In the few games that he did play, in terms of fantasy points per game, he was the 191st best fantasy player with only 25 points in 44 games. And right now, he's lined up on the third line with Lars Eller. And with Connor Sherry, that's not a place that I would like to be personally. And while he should still get some top power play time, Having seen how he did last year, he's not someone that interests me this year. Too much of a risk, in my opinion. Next up, Anthony Mantha. And at first, I wasn't super interested in him either, since he didn't exactly have a groundbreaking season. was injured for a lot of it, so there's definitely a concern there. But 23 points in 37 games also doesn't, isn't, doesn't exactly scream draft me. But looks like he's getting a spot on that top line with Ovechkin and Kuznetsov. So as long as he sticks there, he definitely has some fantasy value. 
Now, as long as they don't move him off that top line in the preseason, he's someone that I would throw a super late pick at, and he is going pretty late with an ADP of 166.3. So if I'm really late in my draft and I see Anthony Manth there, I really need a left winger or a right winger, whatever it is. He's got the dual eligibility, which is nice. I would consider throwing a pick at Anthony Manth just because he is getting that spot on the top line with Ovechkin. As soon as he's taken off that line, though, not someone I'm super high on. Next, I have Tom Wilson, who in hitting leagues finishes the 79th best player in terms of fantasy points per game. He's not someone that I'm super excited about outside of leagues that have hits, but in bangers leagues and leagues that have hits as a category, as a point value, he's quite nice. Now, obviously, he's injured for a little while, right? But he is scheduled to return in December, and if you do have a couple of IR spots, it's definitely worth stashing him. Because once he comes back, guys, he's going to be a huge presence for you on your team. And he's definitely going to be able to help you in those fantasy playoffs as well. Definitely a really big boost for someone who's going so late with an ADP. Now, if you're in a league that doesn't really have hits, he's not someone that I'm super excited about stashing on IR and waiting for. Because he's not exactly a groundbreaking player. So in leagues that don't have hits, I probably wouldn't draft him. But if you're in a league that has hits, oh my god, he's so valuable, guys. And at this ADP, he's someone that you really do have to grab and stash on an IR spot. Then I have Dmitry Orlov, who had himself, honestly, not too bad of a year last year. 35 points in 76 games and a decent amount of hits and blocks peripherals. He's someone that's a safe pick where he's currently going in drafts, which is super, super late at 170.5. But he's not someone that has a tremendous ceiling, right? He's someone that'll give you a safe floor night in and out with those peripherals. And he gets, you know, a point every couple of games. But really, he's not a super exciting player. But if there isn't really anybody that has that much upside left, and at that point in the draft there really isn't, Dmitry Orlov is a safe pick for your blue line. Then I have Dylan Strom, who signed directly out of Chicago, and last year he actually had a really good year with 48 points in 69 games, and he was only a minus 6, which considering he was playing for Chicago is pretty impressive. Now the big thing is that he doesn't shoot the puck all that much, and his shooting percentage was 17.5%. He's not going to be able to maintain that this year. And his line mates aren't exactly crazy good, right? He's got McMichael and Connor Brown, at least right now. And honestly, that doesn't instill a whole lot of confidence in me. So Dylan Strom, he's going to regress from last year. And his line mates aren't that great. So he's not someone I'm currently looking at for fantasy purposes. And next I have defenseman Martin Fairbury, who had 17 points in 79 games. So obviously you're not drafting him for his offensive production. The reason you would draft him is because he hits like a crazy man. 251 hits. It's absolutely fantastic. Decent amount of block shots there as well. So he's definitely someone that'll give you a safe floor in points-based leagues that have hits and block shots. And he's also someone that in categories leagues, if you need to cover those categories, is someone that you can consider. He's not someone that excites me a lot this year. I don't think his offensive production is going to go up all that much, even though he is going to be playing top pairing in all likelihood with John Carlson. He's going to get a lot of minutes, which is why he's going to get a lot of hits and a lot of block shots. Honestly, guys, not someone I'm overly excited about. Unless I'm in a bangers league, a league that count hits, then he'll have a decent floor, which is good night in and night out, but he's not someone that has a very high ceiling. Then I have Connor Brown, who they got from the Ottawa Senators, 39 points in 64 games last year. He's someone that's very, very sneaky good player. He's someone that's super, super underrated. And right now he's lined up to play on the second line with Dylan Strom and McMichael. So that's not something that I'm super high on right now, but we're definitely going to keep an eye on him. He's not someone that I'm drafting. But he's someone that I'm keeping a close eye on because he's someone that could definitely catch fire at one point in the season. And while he's hot, he's someone that I'm going to want to pick up. So definitely keep an eye on my waiver wire videos for that. And then last but not least, I have Garnett Hathaway, who's probably going to play on the fourth line this year. So obviously, you're not picking him for his offensive capabilities. Only 26 points in 76 games last year. It was a plus 19, which is really solid. But you're picking him also, just like Martin Faraberry, for the hitting upslide. So you're grabbing him in bangers leagues. He'll give you a safe floor night in and night out. But again, the ceiling is not super, super high for Garnet Hathaway. There's points in the season where he might get a little bit hot offensively where you could consider streaming him. But he's not someone that I'm overly high on. But if you are in the Bangers League and you're really deep in the draft and you got nobody better to draft, well, Garnet Hathaway is definitely someone that you can consider. And then I'm not going to talk about Nick Backstrom because I don't actually think he's going to play this season. So... For the time being, I do not recommend you draft Nick Backstrom. If that changes, I'll definitely let you know in a waiver wire video. But for now, stashing Backstrom on a IR spot just doesn't seem like a very productive way to use that IR spot. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. Please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And if you do want to take your support to the next level, you can follow me on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Fantasy Tipped.